I've been feeling down since this morning. I ended up getting transferred to the sales department, which I really didn't want, and now I have to go and introduce myself to the clients for a handover. Feeling down. It's been over 10 years since my mother passed away, yet I've been feeling listless ever since. My name is Becky Turner, 21 years old. I graduated from high school and this is my third year working at a trading company. This spring, I unfortunately got transferred to the least desired sales department. Becky, where's the newspaper? My father, in his pajamas, asks. It's on that table, isn't it? I reply irritably, to which he scratches his unkempt hair and says, Oh right, my bad, my bad. Come on, just eat your breakfast, otherwise it's never clean up. My irritation mounts on top of my already heavy heart, making my tone harsher. My mother passed away when I was eight years old. Since then, I've been the one taking care of the housework. My father, who used to leave everything to my mother, didn't even know where his socks were. I am grateful for my father raising me on his own, but as I became an adult and after my mother passed away, seeing him become a shell of his former self filled me with despair, driving me to spend every day determined. I must at least pull myself together. Maybe that unknowingly became a heavy burden for me, who was still only eight years old. Even though I wanted to cry my heart out because I miss my mother and wish someone could support me, I had no such place. I said, Thanks for the meal. Put the dishes roughly in the kitchen and left the house as if I was being rushed. Ignoring my father's, Have a good day. Behind me. Sigh. I hurried towards the station. My boss said, Everyone who gets ahead has experienced sales. You're expected to excel. It's sudden, but take this and visit our client tomorrow for a handover greeting. Then I was handed a paper bag with a gift and documents, a sheet of paper printed with the name and contact details of a company I'd never heard of, and a map showing a location I was unfamiliar with. For someone like me, who's not interested in climbing the corporate ladder, this is nothing but a heavy burden. With the new fiscal year underway, the train is packed with fresh faces entering the workforce. They're all radiating a bright shine. Usually, I wouldn't even notice, but today it's particularly irritating. As the landscape outside the window shifts from buildings to mountains and greenery, the number of passengers gradually decreases, and by the time I reach the intended station, only two of us, including myself, disembark. It was surprisingly rolled there. Unbelievable, there's not even a convenience store. I couldn't spot a fast food restaurant, a pub, or a cafe anywhere. Only one taxi was waiting in front of the station. Almost deserted, with a driver sleeping with a newspaper over his face. It's surprising that just a two-hour train ride from New York could bring me to such a countryside. Then, a small diner next to the station caught my eye. I hadn't eaten much for breakfast and was now hungry. The time was just past 11 am. There was still time before my meeting with the client. Let's have an early lunch. I opened the light green door and entered the diner. A woman in a dress of the same light green color welcomed me with a smile. Welcome, please take any seat you like. She seemed to be in her late 30s. Please feel free to put your belongings on the next seat. We don't have many customers at this hour. I sat in the middle seat placing my belongings next to me. I ordered a beef stew and coffee and quietly waited. Are you perhaps from New York? Yes, I am. The diner was bright and quiet, filled with the aroma of stewed dishes. It felt more like a small pub than a diner. I really like this atmosphere. Soon, the scent of the beef stew placed before me stirred a sense of nostalgia. I took a bite and unexpectedly teared up. It tastes just like my mother's cooking. For some reason, that thought crossed my mind. It's delicious, really. I murmured involuntarily. Then, the woman from the diner said, Thank you very much. With a joyful smile. Her smile was so warm, it reminded me of my mother's. My mother was an excellent cook. My father and I loved the beef stew she made. Whenever she asked, what would you like to eat today? I would always shout. Beef stew. 
Then my father would agree. Me too, beef stew. My mother would laugh. Becky and you, always choosing beef stew. Those days will never return. Since then, I hadn't eaten beef stew even once. It would remind me of my mother, and I felt like I might start crying. Seeing my father cry all the time, I thought our home would fall apart if I started to cry too, so I've been holding back my tears. Yet, why did I order beef stew here? Is something the matter? Oh, no, I just remembered my mother. Your mother? She passed away when I was eight years old. Is that so? Are you here on business? Yes, I'm here to visit a client. If you have time, you should visit the nearby church. A church? It's beautiful right now with the cherry blossoms in full bloom, and there's a legend that you can meet people you can no longer see. Meeting the departed. Well, it's just a legend, but the cherry blossoms are truly spectacular. I thought this woman must have seen me about to cry while eating the beef stew. My mother died in April, just when the cherry blossoms were blooming. Seeing cherry blossoms always brings back memories of her and the time of her death. Since stepping off the train, I had been noticing the cherry blossom petals dancing in the wind. After leaving the diner, I thought for a moment about visiting the church, but instead, I headed straight to my client's place. I'll be in charge from this year, my name is Turner, pleased to meet you. I said, offering the greeting along with a gift and my business card, while the company president looked me over and frowned. Inwardly, I muttered, What's with this guy? You plan on doing sales like that? I blurted out. Excuse me? Maybe you should try being a bit more cheerful. It's unpleasant to be greeted so gloomily. The previous representative had such a lovely, smiling face. With that, he briskly returned to the work site. He had hit the nail on the head. The employees seemed to agree, their expression saying as much. Excuse me. Feeling unbearable, I hastily left the scene. What's with that old man? If he preferred the previous representative, why not just have them come? I vented my frustration once I was alone. As I walked, a small church came into view. Ah, is that the church I heard about? I felt drawn towards it, my feet leading me to the church. Surrounded by cherry trees, the area of church was filled with them. Beautiful. Walking through the fantastical cherry blossom blizzard, my mother's smiling face flickered in and out of my mind. Why did you have to leave so soon, Mom? I want to see you. It felt as though her figure was flickering in and out of the tree shadows. Meeting the ones you can no longer meet. The words of the woman from before echoed in my mind. If it were really possible, I'd want to meet my mother. With that thought, I slowly walked through the church grounds. Such things can't be real, can they? Smiling wryly at myself for even entertaining the thought, I left the church and headed towards the station. There was still quite a bit of time before the train arrived. Sitting on the bench and staring blankly in the direction that train would come from, I noticed a little girl attempting to cross the railroad crossing. Ah. Just then, she stumbled and fell into the track's groove. Watch out. I instinctively stood up. Then, from behind me, I heard someone call out. Becky. I instinctively turned around, only to see a woman parsing by me and rushing towards the girl. Just the same name, huh? But I recognized the keychain attached to the woman's bag. That keychain. I made that when I was in elementary school. For sure. Because the same keychain was attached to my bag as well. I began to walk, as if following the woman, still in a daze. She entered the church I were near earlier. I decided to call out to her while she was admiring the cherry blossoms. Mom? The woman slowly turned around. Becky, it's been a while, have you been well? The woman's face, smiling warmly, was unmistakably my mother's. Why such a long face? It's a waste, I gave birth to you with such a cute face, you should smile more. I couldn't help but get annoyed at her carefree laughter. Because of you, mom. You left for heaven all by yourself. 
at my words, my mother softly cast her eyes down. Yes, you're right. It's my fault. I'm sorry. Why are you apologizing? Dad does that too, always apologizing. As I started to cry uncontrollably, my mother gently placed her hand on my head. It was the familiar warmth of my mother. That made the tears flow even more, unstoppable. This was the first time I had cried so much since my mother passed away. I reflect on how I was never kind to my father after my mother passed away. Dad was really hopeless, and I ended up saying so many terrible things to him. After my mother died, my father would cry in front of her photo every day. Even though I wanted to cry, there I was, feeling it was unfair that only my grown-up father was crying. When I started high school, he tried to make lunch and ended up messing up the kitchen. I yelled at him. Why do you bother with things you can't do? You know you can't cook, right? You can't do laundry or any household chores, so stop messing around and just sit quietly. All he could say was, Sorry. His silence made me even more frustrated. In those moments, I always thought it was all because my mother had left us behind. I needed to blame someone, or else it felt like my heart would break. I couldn't appreciate how hard it was for him, raising me on his own, filled with uncertainty, as I was still a child. Every time he said, Sorry. It irritated me. I never understood who he was apologizing to. I must be such a horrible daughter, Dad probably thinks so too. It's okay, it's okay, you've been so strong for so long, you did well. With those words, she hugged me tightly. Va, that's right. I must have wanted someone to say that to me. I wanted someone to tell me. It's okay. And to embrace me. Such thoughts crossed my mind. I believe she came to visit because she was worried about me. Thank you, Mom. Mom. When I opened my eyes, cherry blossoms were swirling around. It seems I had dozed off on the bench at the station. A dream? When I opened my hand, there was a cherry blossom petal in it. I wiped my tears, stood up, and went back to the company I had visited earlier. Mr. President. As I approached, shouting, the president's eyes widened as if they might pop out. What's it now? Did you forget something? I'm sorry for earlier. Well, to be frank, I came here reluctantly. Huh. I hate and struggle with interacting with people, wondering why I had to be transferred to the sales department, feeling like I'm so unlucky and miserable. I didn't even fully understand what I was saying. But the words just came spilling out and I felt I had to say them. I couldn't respond to what you said earlier because it was too accurate. But I've decided to change my attitude and give it a try. I don't know what happened, but you seem like a different person now. You look good. Well, I'm counting on you. Yes. I believe, you know, sales is about connecting people to people. It's a wonderful job where you can meet people you'd never meet otherwise. Sure, there are people you won't like, people who say harsh things. But, you know, every encounter is a treasure. I'm glad I met you today. Thank you. The employees were looking at me with a What's going on? expression, but I wasn't bothered by it at all. And so, I headed back to the diner where I visited. Excuse me. Welcome. Oh, it's you again. Did you forget something? Um, can I take the beef stew from earlier to go? Huh? We don't usually do that. Is that so? I understand. But why do you ask? The beef stew earlier tasted just like my mother used to make. Your mother's. Oh, wait a moment, please. The woman, as if remembering something, went into the back of the diner and returned with an old notebook. This is my recipe book, feel free to take it. What? But isn't it precious to you? It is, but I don't need to look at it to cook anymore. Actually, I lost my mother when I was young too. A kind lady in the neighborhood used to cook for me often, and I learned to make that beef stew from her. She gave me this recipe book when she moved away. That's even more reason I shouldn't take it. You know, 
You remind me a bit of that lady. Hearing that, I flipped through the recipe notebook. My hands trembled when I saw the last page. To Becky, keep smiling and stay strong, Emmy Fisher. What is this? Oh, that's what the lady wrote for me. Becky is my name. Emmy Fisher is my mother's name. And my name is Becky too. What? We looked at each other, astonished. Such things do happen, huh? The woman said thoughtfully. Maybe this notebook was meant to end up with you one day. Mom. I held the recipe notebook close to me. I felt my mother's warmth return. I promised the woman I would come to see her again and left the diner. Next time, I'll come with dad and talk about mom. While heading to the station, I call my father. I'm making beef stew tonight. Well, beef stew, huh? That sounds great. But what brought this on all of a sudden? You know, I met mom. Hey, hey, are you all right? I'm fine. I'll tell you all about it tonight. Come straight home after work, okay? Got it. I'll come home hungry. Ah, and let's visit mom's grave together. Yeah, she would be happy to have us both there. Yeah. Ha uh hum. -huh. What? I've been awful, always putting all the burden on you. That's right, I was just a kid. I wanted to cry more. Sorry. Well, tonight you can cry all you want. Dad's here for you. Stop it. I'm not a little eight-year-old anymore. My father is still like a child in many ways. But I love him just the way he is. I realized that again. Through the car window, I could see the sunset. Watching the world turn red. And I thought maybe my mother guided me here. I'm okay, Mom. I reassured myself.